Welcome everyone to Let's Connect. We are so glad and thankful that you are sending in your mails and positive response to Let's Connect. It's indeed wonderful to notice that you all enjoy the show and the response from people around the world. And today connecting with us on Let's Connect is Shanti Nair, all the way from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Let's say hi to Shanti. Hey Shanti, how are you? Hi Shama, all good. How are you doing? <laughs> Uh, not bad considering our circumstances right now. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> well, Shanti, you are a commercial analyst working for an MNC and you are currently in Amsterdam. Um, what's the situation there? So, yeah, I think uh, I've been one of the lucky to be able to still work from home, like some of the others, some of my friends. And me and my husband, we've been working from home for more than, yeah. Uh, I think close to three this is the fourth week already uh i wouldn't say working from home with small kids around is super easy it's definitely you know uh, losing your boundaries between your work parenting and all the other tasks that you do so that has not been easy but then still i think we should considering uh, you know the larger scheme of things still okay i would say uh, if i have to say about the lockdown itself here they haven't been that strict on the lockdown like uh, compared to the neighboring uh, we can still go out for fresh air so we are allowed to step out for exercises you know going to the market anything that we want to do so most of them are still open but then they do uh, come with you know warnings that you have to keep that one and a half meters distance and you know whatever precautions that you need to take Ah, the situation is pretty much similar so, to what we are having here in Australia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think compared to the cases that we have here, that's pretty open, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then the, they didn't uh, the want to in the about, um, Yeah, the COVID cases in uh, Netherlands isn't all that great yet uh, because you have around 17,000 confirmed COVID cases and uh, you have a mortality rate of close to 10 percent with around 1,700 deaths so far. Um, is that scary? <laughs> uh, you know, from sources, it's also confirmed that, you know, there might be many more cases, but they don't have rampant testing here. They say right. if in a family, one person is confirmed, confirmed as possible they're not testing the people the rest of the uh, members in the family ah. so they limit the number of testing and that has also resulted in saying that you know this 10 percent mortality rate compared to other countries i think there is uh, where there are a bit more uh, testing available all right so you're assuming that so that's the one... uh, confirmed cases of covid is uh, portrayed wrongly perhaps yes yet also because of the base being so low mm -hmm, mm -hmm. compared to that the number of cases seem much higher so how long are you going to be in for the lockdown uh, well for now it says april 28th right. the last deadline was april 6th of course we knew that was going to be extended and now it says april 28th and that's when the schools will take a decision you know when they will uh, open it but we still i mean in the last one and a half weeks, we do see the number of cases. You know, if you look at the graph, the uh, curve has started to flatten a bit, which right. looks positive. I would say. But it, there is still, you know, the number of deaths are still close to 175 per day. So, yeah, I mean, when you stay at home, we just step out even now only uh, once a week just for our uh, gross, you know, usual groceries. I feel like there's a lot happening out there. But right. So I think in the Netherlands, partner? people are not. Sorry, yeah, sorry, in the that? Netherlands, people are not. They're a bit more like, like it's just a flu, you know. It will. Uh, it's just like your every year will attack, and it's also around the time that where we have our yearly flus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, be very careful in the beginning. I mean, there's no panic. There's, you know, it's like it's a normal thing. You know, you just get uh, the flu and you'll be fine. That was the initial feel yeah, or you know uh, yeah. everyone had mm -hmm. yeah they were not really that concerned but now do you really feel vulnerable at the situation uh i have to say i mean we've been taking i told you right me and my husband mm -hmm. we've been taking turns to 
uh, step out right. you know, once a week to do that groceries. We mm-hmm. have been taking the precautions that we need to, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. So I mean, we've been limiting our exposure. I would say mm-hmm. we've been doing what is required. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is a little reassuring, and you, it's not it's not a state where you really yeah. feel worried to step out. No, no, definitely not. But talking about the rest of your family, I understand that your parents are based in UK. Uh, mm-hmm. and the situation there isn't so great either. Uh, with elderly parents no. in UK, how does it feel to be here? Yeah, I mean, I think that's always concerning, uh, given their age, they have, uh, you know, uh, the threat is more, especially since my dad has had a, a heart surgery a few years ago, and my mom, she's, she is still working with the NHS, Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And she works in the operation theater. So now, of course, the number of uh, elective cases, the surgeries, they've all gone down. I mm-hmm. mean, there are most of them have been canceled, and these theaters are getting converted in, you know, um, uh, spaces for isolation. Right. So it is getting a bit scarier, but she still has to do her work. I mean, of course, healthcare professionals have to, uh, you know, be there right, for she's everyone. She's taking it in the right so stride and to, uh, planning to continue. She's definitely, yes, yes, definitely doing that. So I'm very, very proud of her. But then at the same time, you know, it's always concerning. I totally understand that. So but that's yes, why uh, for me, it is a bit more difficult to understand, the, I mean, uh, you know, uh, accept the people who think that this is light and, you know, you can still do whatever you want, you know, just uh, take care of yourself. You're not going to affect others. So that's a bit difficult to ex- people who still go around doing whatever they want to do. Yeah, it, I think everyone has to act responsibly, you know, and make sure that, you know, yeah. their acts don't cause any further damage. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a collective responsibility. <laughs> Tell me about how you've been juggling between working, um, doing home shows and handling your two little brats at home. (laughs) Okay, that's the most interesting. So I have two boys. The older one is seven year old. The younger one is one and a half. So it's quite a gap. I have ensured that the older one does, you know, given some time for um, uh, babysitting. Mm -hmm. So that has you know, kind of uh, encouraging him to do a bit of household chores. But then I have to say, I have kind of lost all the boundaries between parenting, work, you know, uh, being the chef. Everything has wow. come in like, you know, there's no boundary at all. It's it's just like, you know, morning I wake up and I follow my group and I just, you know, move from one uh, uh, role to the other Mm-hmm. without any uh, boundary. So I yeah, don't know, it feels... No change of scene. <laughs> no, there's no change of scene, you know. At one point, I'm in a call, you know, trying to uh, speak something about work. And then in the next moment, I'm like, like you should not, you know, stop shouting, stop uh, making that kind of noise. I'll be like speaking to them. It feels weird. Yeah. I mean, at least it felt weird in the first two weeks, I would say. And yeah, but then, you know, I think with your colleagues I around, uh, I, may, I, I, I believe that they're also going through the same experience and you have a lot of background noise Absolutely. in the form of family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have to say that in my whole team, I think there are just two of us who who have young kids. Mm-hmm. The rest of them, they, their kids are like, you know, teenagers. So wow. for them, it's like, yeah, they do understand. But at the same time, it does feel a bit strange that when I speak, it's always like, mama, mama, background <laughs> noise. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the MCC yeah, I mean, slowly I, I started would... seeing the you know, family side of uh, every employee right now. But um, is it easy to handle a conference? <laughs> um, uh, do you, do you go, get into conferencing, video conferencing with your clients? Uh, yes, I mean, my clients are all internal clients. So mm-hmm. yes, video conferencing, and we try to do it as much as possible. But then that's where me and my husband, we take turns. Uh-huh. He works from the attic, I work from the living room. And then if it is uh, a, a call between, uh, I mean, with the internal clients, then I say, okay, now I have to use the echo there. Uh-huh. So yeah, we take our turns and that's how we've been managing our it's okay. Had... I mean, there are sometimes. 
Yeah, have you yeah, had any really embarrassing when... situations where, you know, uh, someone's messed up and you're still on a call? No, luckily, none, I mean, none of those things have been like the BBC you. moment, you know. <laughs> so far, it's been great. I think the youngest, he still wants to say hi and bye to everyone uh, mm. when I have a call, which is okay. So that's fine. He joins. How come you're missing and, you him know. now? He is sleeping. It's 30. So I think he wakes up around 8, 8 between 8 and 8.30. So that's your window. <laughs> That's my window. I mean, I usually wake up around 5.45 when me and my husband, we get most of our work done between that 6 to 8. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I mean uh, when actually work starts so around 8.30, I don't get much done. So till 12 noon, I usually have my calls and emails done. Mm -hmm. And when he goes back to sleep at 1 o'clock, that's the next three hour window where I really get something done. Great. <laughs> so All it right. is challenging, it's tiring by end of the day, but then, mm -hmm. you know, I do enjoy that I'm with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are moments when I really want to, you know, like stay away and be isolated, <laughs> but I do have In its um, true senses, time with huh? them. As well. <laughs> In its true senses, absolutely. I mean, you know what me time is, you do need that. I mean, if you look at it, this is the time where you have to do yourself. I think a lot of people are speaking about it at this time. Right. But you really have the luxury to do that. If you have so much going around and, you know, you're trying to juggle between so many roles, you have the luxury to do that. I think it's in spite of that, finding that right moment to, you know, take that time out and do something that you really enjoy doing. But have you, have you ever discovered that you do still have a time like that even amidst all this? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think what has been have been doing is following this ritual of waking up at that certain time and, you know, having that time until eight. I think right. that's something that we've been strictly following where we fit in, you know, even 15 to 20 minutes of yoga or whatever that we've been trying to do. Ah, lovely. Uh, in fact, that's, so uh... we've been fitting that in. <laughs> trying to make it and all then work. at the end but of the day. Has, um... Yeah, yeah. What has turned your world upside down, you know, as far as this situation is concerned? Like, what's changed for you? You still work, you still manage the home shows, you still have to take care of your boys. What's changed? Yeah, so for me, something that has really changed is uh, my hobbies oh. and my interest in dance. So, mm -hmm. I mean, every Sunday I have my Bharatnatyam lessons with my teacher. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesdays I give Bollywood lessons. So it's like Bollywood Zumba and Bollywood choreography. These two have come to a standstill. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there are teachers who've been giving lessons via Zoom, you know, Skype, etc. We've tried that with the Bharatnatyam. It did not really work. I mean, I think you can do one-to-one -one lessons, but having a group of more than two or three menotical and same for Bollywood. I don't think, I mean, after it being a, on a weekday, I don't think I had the energy to still say, some of my students did say, you know, can we not do something on Zoom? And I was like, you know, at the end of the day, on a Tuesday especially, I'm, I'm so exhausted that, you know, I literally crawled to bed. <laughs> You'd rather so in the morning I'm full the of energy. That time off. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So in the morning, I have much more energy, but towards the end of the day, it kind of like, you know, goes this way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I still have to find that. I do, I do miss socializing. I mean, one of the reasons why I did, I started doing the lessons was not just for the fun of dance itself, but it was also a place where I could meet new people, make new friends. And I think that was the whole idea. And that, that I miss, but luckily they do have this app called House Party app. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you... It's quite interesting. So uh, one of my friends introduced me to it and I've been having quite a few house parties, house I would parties. say, in the weekends. <laughs> you can video chat up to with eight friends and you right. can play uh, virtual games there. All right. Card right. games, so, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. good thing is that my older one, he has been spending some time with my uh, parents on that mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they can play games together. So yeah, well, it does have great. some positive side. <laughs> All right, so you are still finding time to bond with family during this time. Yes, yes, mm. for sure. That, 
that sounds great but then you know uh, f they always say that familiarity breeds content uh, in this case you are uh, home bound or rather home stuck with four members of your family <laughs> uh, do you uh, relate to that saying or do you say that okay that's that's not my case uh, say that again familiarity they say that familiarity breeds content <sighs> <laughs> well, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to create Not a family something. problem out there. If you want to skip the question, <laughs> you're free to do so. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think, uh, yeah. Honestly, I haven't given it that much of a thought. But That's there are wonderful. definitely Shanti, positive sides. I, I really think there. you shouldn't give it too much of a thought. <laughs> I think that was just out of the blue that I wanted to ask you uh, how it feels to you know, be within a home, you know, seeing the same person every day. But if you haven't really even thought about it, I think you're having a great time with your family. And that is one of the best things I can see in your family right now. And I think that is one of the big, biggest positive aspect about it. <laughs> no, I definitely think that we are spending more time together. I mean, mm -hmm. In, in the quality sense that time? we are really connected much more mm -hmm. quality time exactly more mm -hmm. quality time more you know yeah, knowing about each other and understanding uh, you know what each person likes how each person's day was you know having more of that quality talks I would say especially with the older one who does love to do that talking I think mm -hmm. before we were in caught up in such fast life you know we were forcing him to you know follow that routine and go on whereas mm -hmm. now there's so much more listening time Mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I absolutely enjoy. And that's definitely a positive side of this, I would say. How do you keep them engaged? Engaged. For the uh, older one, it's much easier. I would say he has a routine from school that he has to follow. So I rely on him. I show him, guide him, you know, on the things that he has to do with uh, the iPad. So he is busy. He has a routine that he has to follow. With the younger one, it's a bit more difficult. I mean, 18 months, you know, uh, having him to follow a routine is quite difficult. But then I have been very strict with the uh, TV time that I used to give. I've let mm -hmm. gone of that, you know, that kind of rules here. And mm -hmm. now I do give him quite a bit of YouTube. I'm guilty of that. But at mm -hmm. the same time, I also give quite a lot of household utensils that he can play with. Oh, that's So nice. it's like I have to find that 15 minutes window where he makes music or where, where he plays with, you know, something that he's uh, feeling for the first time in terms of texture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So oh, that's very to beautiful. So get you're just that he's not him to various things before. that can yeah, help him. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is how they usually do at the daycare here as right, well, you know, right. give them, uh, let them touch something Sense which they haven't yeah. felt before, yeah. so it could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, something of that sort, when it's like a time where I cannot really focus, I mean, I have to focus and I cannot really focus on him, I do give him that YouTube type. And mm -hmm. that's uh, to the extent that, you know, when he comes down uh, in the morning, he says, he sits at the couch and then takes a remote and says, Mama, tea, tea. So it's oh. like, you know, indicating to the TV. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> that's like <laughs> too much. He's kind of thought, you know, that's the routine now that, you know, we've been uh, setting him up with. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That is yeah. good. Yeah. Every time the TV is so happening, coming right? around nursery rhymes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have it uh, as a background music while you work. Yeah, 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 I mean, the other day I was recording some of those. It was fun. I mean, he's, yeah. And the other thing, I mean, at 18 months, he's also getting trained to toilet, which is great. Which wouldn't have happened if you had to go to work. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> that is I wouldn't wonderful. have seen that it is in great another two years. Mama, good say. job. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm the one who would say, okay, let me do that and, you know, in my interest but it was more that he showed some interest in it so I was like okay, okay why yes, not probably because his mom was around and he's more comfortable with it yeah probably yeah Shanti, but he's definitely you know, having a good time uh-huh you know what uh, we've been connecting to so many people through uh, let's connect uh, from our studios in Melbourne and you know the best part of it you have no idea do you no <laughs> <laughs> well, Shanti, uh, there was a friend of mine uh, from um, my primary school 
and the last time i you know the uh, i met her was probably once in india and before that it was in the gcc and it had to take one situation of covid 19 to reconnect with her uh, and i'm so glad that this is happening via let's connect Shanti, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on our show and it's been a great pleasure talking to my friend from primary school <laughs> Same here, Shama. Same here. And, you know, the best thing is that it doesn't feel like nothing, has, anything has changed in these years. No, it never changes as, as long as we remain the same. No. <laughs> no. And stay true, positive true. and stay safe. Wishing you all the very best. And let's hope that this too shall Thank pass very you soon. and same to you. <laughs> you sure. have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. You too. Bye-bye. First of all, most important, do not panic. Caution is far better than panic. Secondly, let's talk about hand hygiene. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand rub. Now, while selecting an alcohol-based hand rub, make sure it contains at least 60% alcohol. Related to hand hygiene, you might also want to avoid shaking hands with people in this situation or if you do so, perform hand hygiene immediately afterwards. Third, if you are interacting with a person who is symptomatic, that is, if that person is coughing or sneezing, maintain at least a one meter distance from him. Fourth, avoid touching your face, nose and eyes. Stay at home if you are unwell and seek medical attention if you have respiratory symptoms coughing, difficulty in breathing or fever. Now, one important thing to remember here is if you're going to see a GP, call up ahead and let them know what your symptoms are and then follow their instructions. Now, let's talk about respiratory etiquette. If you're coughing or sneezing, make sure to cover your mouth with a tissue paper. After this, dispose of this paper safely in a, into a bin. Then perform hand hygiene. 